Hi, I'm Tom. I'm the creator of Zero to Finals. I'm a GP working in the UK and I have a special interest in how to learn medicine. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about a concept called the learning curve. And you can find written notes as well as my full course on how to learn medicine at members.zerotofinals.com. So let's jump straight in. The learning curve can be represented with a simple graph. On the x axis is the time or energy that's spent trying to learn a topic. On the y axis, you have the accumulation of knowledge, skills, or expertise in that topic area. Essentially, the y axis represents learning. When you come to learn a new topic, let's say you're learning cardiology. Initially, what your time and energy is spent doing is laying the foundations for all the learning that's going to occur later. You're simply orientating yourself to that topic and getting your head around the very basics. This initial period, the energy and time you spend doesn't result in a great deal of learning. And this is called the latent phase. Once you get through the latent phase, any more time or energy you spend results in rapid learning on that topic. So the rapid accumulation of knowledge, skills or expertise. And this is called the rapid growth phase of the learning curve. Once you develop quite a good set of knowledge or skills on that topic area, your learning will start to plateau. And at this point, more time and energy spent on that topic results in only small gains in learning. And this is called the plateau phase. Medicine is an extremely broad concept to tackle when it comes to learning for medical exams and learning to become a good doctor. There are hundreds of different learning curves across many, many different topics and skills. For example, there's a learning curve for cardiology, There's also one for history taking, one for renal medicine, one for interpreting blood results, and one for inserting cannulas. So there's many different learning curves. You might be on the plateau phase of cardiology. You may have done a lot of revision in cardiology and you've got a really good foundation of knowledge there. Alternatively, you might be in the rapid learning phase of history taking where any practice that you do, history taking, gives you rapid learning. And then, for example, with renal medicine, you may still be in the latent phase. You may be very much at the start of the learning curve for renal medicine. The most efficient way to learn medicine is to spend as much time as possible in the rapid learning phase. Suppose you're tackling a topic and you sense that you're starting to plateau. You're putting in more time and energy, but the learning isn't as fast as it was before. At this point you're in the plateau phase and it will be a good idea to move on to a different topic area where you may be in the latent phase or the rapid growth phase. That way you spend as much time as possible in the rapid growth phase and you stay challenged, motivated, efficient and effective with your learning rather than getting stuck in the tiny details that don't matter as much. Of course, once you're at a satisfactory level where you're plateauing in every topic area that may come up in your upcoming exam, you can always go back and look at the fine details of the topic areas you're most interested in. But while you still have weaknesses, you should be addressing those weaknesses. Medicine is so huge that you could spend a lifetime just studying one tiny topic area. For example, there's super subspecialists who just spend their whole day studying EEGs to diagnose subspecialist types of epilepsy. This is great, but not the objective of medical school. Medical school aims to give you a very broad knowledge base and skill set that you can then apply to any area where you might be placed during your junior doctor training and choose any specialist subject to study later on and become a specialist in if you choose to. By spending as much time as possible in the rapid learning phase, you're maximizing your efficiency and effectiveness at developing a broad set of skills and knowledge for medical exams and for medical school. 
Most of the knowledge and skills you need for medical exams are contained within the latent and the rapid growth phase of the learning curve. If you get to the point where you're starting to plateau on all the topics that could come up in your exams, you're likely to do extremely well in that exam. However, if you spend a lot of time still covering a topic that you've already plateaued in, at the expense of topics where you're still stuck in the latent phase, then you're going to have big weaknesses and you have a high risk of failing. So make sure once you get to the plateauing phase and you have other areas where you need to focus your energy on, you're moving on and going for a different learning curve. So I hope sharing these ideas on the concepts of the learning curve has been helpful for your exam preparation. If you want my full course on how to learn medicine, head over to members.zerotofinals.com and I'll see you in the next episode.